A trajectory that is like no other. Yeah. Top top tech story of the day. Cardi B passes Taylor Swift in streaming <laughs> record. Good work, hmm. girl. Wow. Ooh, yeah, I don't, I some, still don't somebody's that. listening to my my portion because I've never heard any of her music. Me neither. <laughs> you didn't watch Saturday Night Live this weekend? No, I Mission V eight. You was, you, would, you would probably know a couple of songs. They're really popular, but she also sort of came out of nowhere. Len, you can't even f with her. Okay, I can't. I know. That's uh, usually also, the truth with most people. <laughs> If you listen to Politics, 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 you know that Cardi B is a uh, big fan of presidential history. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. She can name all of the presidents. I mean, what? I can't. Oh, that's I, mean, I probably could if I, I used to be able to. Wasn't, you know, you know, I can only time, name their but... last names. No, you listen to yeah. the song The Presidents by Jonathan Colton. Not only will you know the name of the presidents, but you'll also know how many terms they had. Oh, true. Wow. I only know Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, Harrison, Tyler, Polk, Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, oh Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, Wilson, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford. Oh, I mean, that's almost worse than being able to like recite pi wow. Carter <laughs> for a while. Like, Carter, how do you, I have to stop how do you at do Ford. It? No one knows. I learned it. it. I learned it because we used to sing it in first grade, which oh, is really? why it we stops do. at Ford. That's funny. We and never. That thing where you learn something when you're a kid and it just sticks. Yeah, right? just yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the months of the year in Spanish because of a song, and I know the uh, what's it called, the NATO alphabet. <laughs> oh wow, nice. Oh, alpha Bravo. I know yeah. the Our Father in Spanish. Mm, that's pretty good. <laughs> wow. I, know, I know an R Kelly. <laughs> I can say I the Lord's R. Prayer Kelly. in English. <laughs> I used to say R. Kelly, who art in studio. I can say the <laughs> who art ten hail in Marys the closet. And say I'm sorry, and I won't do it again. No, we How used to start our gossip. Spanish class with the Our Father, and that's why I would remember it. Ah, oh, nice. Is it Nuestro Padre? Is Padre Nuestro. Padre que Nuestro. Estás en los cielos. Oh man, now I can't remember. <laughs> Put you at the spot. I didn't mean. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Gosh, now I can't remember it. <laughs> it's that and the uh, soliloquy from Macbeth that I remember. The tomorrow, and oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, yeah. and tomorrow creeps yeah. in this petty pace from day to day, day to the last. Syllable. Syllable. See, I don't know any of this stuff. And all our yesterdays. See, this is the kind of thing really cool that I've memorized. Choir in theater classes. This is the kind of stuff they teach you, and they do a lot of it for like just warming up mouth exercises. So live sure. that when thy summons comes to join the innumerable caravan which moves in that mysterious realm where each must take his chamber in the silent halls of death. Mm. Oh. I can no, spell Mississippi. Do before we do it. <laughs> Podcast. Uh, I wish I knew That's more of yeah. I, I usually do it off, off mic. All right. <laughs> yeah. Five seconds. All right. You guys yeah. ready? I'm ready. I guess. Is yeah. it is it my cold open or yours, Sarah? I think it's mine. I think it's yours. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Three, two. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, April 13th, 2018 from DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from a very spooky Friday the 13th at Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from Oakland, California and the Hack5 studio, I'm Shannon Morse. And spring has finally sprung in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I like that we have, I was going to say three time zones, but Oakland's in the same time zone. <laughs> we Close. have diff more different locations. I have you. a, yes. Uh, Roger Chang in the same time zone as us as yes. well, our producer. How are you? I'm good. Same region, same area, same time zone. Different yeah. airport, different airport. Oakland is the nickel dime, though. It's the 510. Really? Different zip, different area code. <laughs> oh, I always, area I thought codes don't mean anything anymore, do they? I, I mm, thought you really. were about to. No, I was not going to say that. We do approve of our nickel backers, the people who support the show at a dollar a month, which ends up to be five cents a show. And we promise never to force them to listen to Nickelback if they don't want to. <laughs> and thanks for their support. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Facebook's VP of Global Marketing Solutions, Carolyn Everson, told the Wall Street Journal that she has not seen, quote, wild changes in behavior regarding privacy settings on account deletion on Facebook. The company is not anticipating any revenue changes either or drops in ad sales. So good to be Facebook. 
AMD announced its second-generation Ryzen chips will launch April 19th. Pre-orders are open now. There are two 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7s, the 2700X at 329 bucks and the 2700 at 299 bucks, and two 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5s, the 2600X at $229 and the 2600 for 100 bucks. All four processors come with an AMD Wraith cooling unit free in the box. More details probably coming after everybody gets their hands on them on April 19th. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Android patches, Shannon. Germany's Secure Research Lab has discovered several Android phone makers have been skipping updates to the operating system and hiding it from end users. Affected users would see a message in settings that their operating system is up to date despite the most recent patches not being installed. Some manufacturers change the date on the file of the most recent patch on the devices to fool the operating system into believing that it is up to date. Other manufacturers skip updates and they just don't hide it. Of 1,200 devices, Devices tested by SRL, only Google's own Pixel phones included all of the security patches. This is one of those moments where I'm very happy that I have a Pixel 2 XL and I get all those security <laughs> patches. Thank you, Google. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and and uh, to be fair, companies like Samsung, Sony, BQ, Echo, Zuck, they were all just a patch behind. So it's, mm -hmm. it kind of depends on the timing of the test, whether they would be up to date because the manufacturers always lag a little bit behind Google, but they're, they're pretty up to date. They're not doing that nefarious thing you mentioned, changing the date of old patches so that yeah. you can't tell. That's just then that's just nasty. That's messed up. And several of them had four or more missing patches, including Oppo and ZTE and TCL. So that's a pretty serious problem there. Yeah. You know, if you're, not, if you're not updating a patch for whatever reason, you know, your team's not ready, whatever it is, but you're changing the date to obfuscate those facts, it makes you look so much worse than if you were just to say something like, we're working on it, please be patient. Most users, you know, can kind of deal with that sort of thing. It's so underhanded, though, isn't it? Right, right. It's a, it's a, it's a support hack, right? Somebody's going to look and see that they're not up to date, and they're going to start sending emails like, why is my operating system not up to date? And they don't want to deal with them, so they change the date to reduce the number of support tickets. But, I mean, these are security patches. So. I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, we all disapprove. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's there really isn't. There is no excuse for the ones that are missing three or four. Like you've had time to put those in uh, and test them. That's that's just that's not acceptable. Well, speaking of security on some level, The Verge has learned that Google's upcoming Gmail redesign will include a confidential mode that can restrict recipients from forwarding or copying or downloading or printing emails. Gmail will also supposedly let users require a passcode sent by SMS to the recipient in order to open an email, as well as set an expiration date of reading that email, after which that email might be deleted. Google I.O. starts May 8th, which is probably the place that we're going to hear more about this if all these rumors are true. We should probably clarify that you could still take a picture of the device that the email is pulled up on and then it's not going to be confidential anymore. Yeah, if this works the way Outlook, Outlook does some of these same things and, and usually it uses OneDrive to pull them off so that it, you're you have to get the text out of OneDrive. So my guess is they'd probably use Google Drive for some of this stuff. I like the idea of setting a passcode with a with an like a one time passcode with SMS for certain emails. That's an interesting thing. It's 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 not as good as actually encrypted email, but but for some situations where you know the person on the other end just isn't going to be able to handle that, uh, but but you want to provide at least a speed bump. Uh, it, that that's a nice thing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole kind of ephemeral email idea here, I, I can see use cases for a lot of the stuff. You know, I was sharing a video with somebody the other day and I had a passcode on the video and it came from Vimeo, but I was sharing the, the link via email and it's like <laughs> to have some other layer of like, hey, I really mean this. You know, it's this is, you know, supposed to be, um, you know, the privacy is very important. I can see that working. But as you mentioned, Shannon, it's like, there are ways to get around this as there are ways to get around any message that's supposed to, you know, only be seen once and then go away. Right. Yeah. It's that self-destruct feature that can always be sideswiped in some way or another. Yeah. Nothing is ever really gone on mm -hmm. the Internet unless you really <laughs> need it. Then it's totally gone. <laughs> and you can't find it. <laughs> the Verge's Paul Miller has an article on improvements to web apps 
that may get them a lot closer to native apps. This is near and dear to my heart. I've been talking about this for a long time. The idea that web apps are cross-platform, right? As long as your browser standards compliant, uh, you should be able to put it on anything. And the operating system or the type of browser shouldn't matter. And that releases us from the curation of the app store makers. All right. Microsoft and Apple recently added support for progressive web apps. We'll call them PWAs for short uh, on Windows and iOS, respectively. That means a progressive web app can now run on Android, iOS, Chrome OS, and Windows. PWAs can have an icon, just like your native app. They can launch from a cache for offline functions. They can even handle push notifications. Uh, if, if and, and this is Paul Miller laid this out really well in his article. If you're like, yeah, but a native app's always going to perform better because you can write it in a native language instead of JavaScript. There is a language called WebAssembly that can be pre-compiled uh, so that it compiles super fast in the browser and runs at near native speeds with consistent performance. It can even interrupt with JavaScript, and you can take your C and C++ programs and compile them to WebAssembly. So that gets you pretty close to that native app performance. So take that objection away. The last thing that Miller mentions is, yeah, but come on, native apps look better, right? You know, you can just do more than you can do with web standards. Well, there's a standard called Houdini, that lets developers talk directly to a browser's cascading style sheet rendering engine instead of having to lay out the cascading style sheets the normal way. That allows you to do more custom layouts, styles, animations. The problem here is that Houdini's spec is still locked up in a straitjacket. <laughs> it hasn't <laughs> escaped uh, yet. It's, the spec is still being determined, and, and there's no sign of when it might get adopted. Uh, Chrome is the only browser you can test it in. So that one has a ways to go. But we keep getting closer and closer to something that will break us out of the stranglehold that essentially Google and Apple have over app stores. Very, very cool. I think, I think this is super cool because... It, it it has web standards, so you have the ability for it to be uh, to be standardized and have the security of that, and then you can probably have some curation out there if you want it, but you don't mm -hmm. have to be reliant on it. There won't be a gatekeeper anymore. And and the thing that I like the most about it is cross platform. Anything that's cross platform means if I want to use the app, it doesn't matter what device I have, it doesn't matter what operating system I use. And that gets us back to the thing that makes the web great is not having to think about choosing something at the beginning and limiting your choices down the road. That is kind of cool. And it would open up a lot of abilities to switch operating systems a lot easier because yeah. you're not stuck with one app on this one iOS device. And that's been one of the things that has slowed down open source operating systems. Yeah, know, absolutely. Linux, be, because you're like, oh, wait, but I can't get this program. Well, moving on, a Moscow court granted the Russian communication regulators request to order ISPs to block Telegram service in Russia. Russia's FSB security service ordered Telegram to hand over encryption keys so it can read messages of suspected criminals and terrorists. Ter Telegram declined, saying it does not control users' keys. Telegram can appeal the decision within 30 days. Telegram founder Pavel Durov posted to VK.com that the com company will be able to bypass locks and continue to provide service. How many users are there in Russia? A, uh, nine a, a, million or so. A, 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 like active users. Okay, so that's pretty significant for the company. Um, you know, they obviously have other markets um, and there's, you know, some, uh, you know, some of the folks who are responsible for making Telegram are, you know, are, are, are Russian themselves. So yeah, Durov himself, he's, a, he's founder of Telegram. Exactly. Right. So yeah, how important is it? An app like Telegram lives and breathes on the fact that it is, you know, it's it's safe and secure, right? Or more so than a lot of competitors. So for Russia to ask this, it's like, of course, Telegram is going to be like, no, we're not doing this. But how much does it hurt their, you know, their growth trajectory? I mean, it, it's it's more of an emotional blow to Durov because he got kicked out of Contacte because the Russian government uh, allegedly was behind pushing some oligarchs in to, to push him out of there. He started Telegram as a way to preserve secure communications because he feels like there's not enough of that. And now they're trying to shut that down in Russia. So this is a cause for him. Business-wise, I'm not, I'm not sure whether it's going to impact him that much or not. 
Uh, and the other thing to consider, Shannon, is a lot of people have picked on Telegram security because they have a roll your own encryption standard. They have the encryption off by default. You have to yeah. turn it on. Uh, but this shows like even that was a threat to Russia, apparently. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I chose Signal over Telegram was because you are completely opted into that encryption as soon as you download the application. But Telegram is still a very good service and one of my first choices when it comes to encryption that's easy to use for uh, for all the people that want to download it. Yeah. Um, so this is an unfortunate blow. However, I don't know if it's going to hurt their business either. Yeah, no, it's a fair question. I, I think Durov will be okay. <laughs> he just won't be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Comcast's latest Xfinity cable bundle now includes something new, Netflix. Netflix has actually been in Comcast X1 bundle since 2016, already available as a Comcast add-on, but now start of a standard package. Netflix streaming will still count against Comcast's one terabyte data cap, though in a joint statement about the partnership, the company said around 50% of X1 customers are already actively using Netflix on the platform. Now, don't forget, there might be something behind this as far as the competition goes. Potential merger between HBO owner Time Warner and AT&T could play into this too. Yeah, hmm. because and Netflix considers HBO its competition, not Comcast. Uh, and, and Comcast uh, would like to have some leverage against HBO, one would think, and having Netflix as a part of a standard bundle. I mean, it, like you said, it's been on the X1 box for a while, but putting it a part of a standard bundle, that's going to be a nice little subscription bump for Netflix there. <laughs> I canceled Comcast because Netflix became a thing. <laughs> Well, you canceled Comcast Cable. Did you cancel Comcast as an ISP? No, I still have them as an ISP, unfortunately. And I think this serves Comcast. Granted, there's people like us uh, who all were like, yeah, we don't get cable service anymore. We just use things on the internet for that. But there are a lot of people who haven't. And mm -hmm. even if that number is slowly declining, Comcast could probably use this as a way to keep people like, hey, don't cancel Netflix like your niece Shannon did, or don't cancel cable like your niece Shannon did to get Netflix. We'll just put Netflix in your package and now you have it. See, you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> well, you know, and all kidding aside, it's like, okay, Netflix is what, you know, $10 a month, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, thereabouts. And for a lot of folks, when you're trying to decide, am I a cord cutter? Am I ready to get rid of cable? You know, if you watch enough Netflix and you're, uh, you know, on a budget or only want to spend so much, then that's you know one of the reasons that a lot of people have been like yeah you know this cable package is just it's very hard to justify i'm out of here netflix being part of the cable package well then you're that much less likely to try to live life without it yeah and and it's like i said it's a nice boost for netflix because right now you have to ask comcast hey can i can I activate Netflix? You have to do it. You do it on the box, but you have to you have to go and do it. We're, whereas if it's just part of your bundle, you're already going to be logged in. It's going to be it's going to be great for everybody. <laughs> hey, folks! If you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, subscribe to Daily Tech Headlines available on the Amazon Echo, the Google Home, Anchor app, and more. You can find out all the ways at DailyTechHeadlines.com. So Motherboard has a report out today uh, revealing some of the local police forces they have discovered in the United States, as well as some federal agencies, that have been using a device called Gray Key to unlock iPhones. Remember, this was a big deal when Apple said, we are not going to put a backdoor into encryption. We are not going to assist in breaking our encryption with the FBI. The FBI went and spent apparently a lot of money uh, a lot of people have tried to speculate who they paid to do it. This is a new way to do it since then. This device costs you 15,000 bucks, so it's not cheap. Uh, and you have to connect it to the internet. It, it has a, it's geofenced, so if it's taken out of the police office, it won't work anymore. And a lot of the processing is done in the cloud. There's also a $30,000 version though, that is an offline model. So you don't have to connect to the cloud. And I think we'll find that might be a, a problem. Malwarebytes reported on the box in March and suspects it uses some sort of jailbreak to work. Locked phones are connected to the box for two minutes, after which the phone can be disconnected while it unlocks. It can take from hours to days to unlock, depending on the length of the passcode. Now, Shannon, you've been digging into this. How <laughs> do we think this thing works? Because yeah. most of these articles just say magic box. You plug the iPhone in and wait. 
Yeah, and that's so unfortunate because every time I read these news articles, I'm like, but I want to know the technology. How does it actually work? So luckily, I have a lot of friends in the InfoSec communities, myself included, who study the technical aspects of these kind of hacker gadgets. And uh, one of my friends replied to me on Twitter, and he said that it sounds like it replaces the iBoot with a custom brute forcing uh, type of firmware operator. So when the iPhone is unplugged from the gray key, it continues operating on the phone and brute forcing all of the different encryption databases that are in the iPhone so that once it's plugged in, it's able to access all that information. So it exfiltrates all that data super easily by uh, by replacing the iBoot in the first place. So it totally goes around all the encryptions that are in place by the passphrase or the passcode that you put on your phone to unlock it every day. So from a consumer standpoint, you probably wouldn't notice anything if an iBoot is replaced. But in this case, obviously, they're able to get into all that encryption. So it reminds me of these master boot record infections, these things that happen at boot up where they're exactly. really hard to get rid of as malware. This is saying, you know what? We'll get around all of Apple's security precautions by just <laughs> changing everything that does that and, get, and getting rid of it. Does that, however, okay. So somebody is, maybe they've passed on. Maybe they are a, a, a convicted uh, terrorist and they're trying to find more information. Nobody cares what happens to those iPhones, right? Everybody's like, eh, you know, they're, they're probably the ACLU cares because of, of general rights, and that's good. Uh, but most people won't be sympathetic. But what if it's you, Shannon, who right. are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, I would like to, I would like you to look at my phone to see evidence. And the forensic guy says, well, you know what, I can get a whole lot more information if I plug it into this gray box and then replaces your bootloader. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, uh, if they purchase the $30,000 one, which I, I know you said it's it's rather costly, but to me, compared to Celebrite, which is what the FBI was uh, contracting with to get unlocked iPhones, they were charging $200,000. So compared to that, $30,000 is not a lot of money for these law enforcement agencies. Uh, they could easily take care of this and, and put some kind of scary new iBoot firmware on your phone. Who knows if it's still in place when you receive your phone back after they've decrypted all this information yeah, who knows if restore... your phone is still encrypted correctly by the apple operating system like we we don't know exactly how this the technical aspects of this take place so we don't know if your phone is still going to protect be protected after they do whatever research they need to do on that phone i mean granted this is not something most of us are going to have to deal with but it right. would be good to know if you're cooperating with an investigation like hey uh, I will give you the passcode. Guys, promise not to plug this into Greylock, all right? I need my bootloader. I want to I want to keep it there. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And it would be nice to know a little bit more about this product so you could see, you could do easy tests to find out if it's been adapted that way. The other yes. thing, like you're right, if, uh, let's say, I think I've, I read that Celebrite's prices are down to $5,000 per phone. Even then, $30,000, that's six phones, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to unlock more than six phones, which many police departments will, You've paid for it. It pays for itself eventually. It only does iPhones, though. It doesn't do yeah. Android phones. Uh, and the thirty thousand dollar one does it just just has a two factor authentication. And you know, you know right. that many <laughs> of these departments have that second factor on a Post-it note in the same room as this box. Yes. Which then becomes a vulnerability, and somebody could take the Post-it note in the box and make off with it. That's such a huge vulnerability. So even even if like okay, say so say they got the thirty thousand dollar one, they have their two factor authentication laying around somewhere. Somewhere, what if they got it stolen? What if somebody stole it from them? It's not being geocached in any way. So the license protection that uh, Gray Shift, I believe, is the name of the company that is selling this product. Uh, their their protection is null and void at that point. So you can plug this thing in anywhere, and as long as you have that two factor authentication code you'd be able to use the device as well. Now, if you have the $15,000 version, which they say has very strict geocaching or geo uh, location so that you can only use it on one specific network, well, guess what? There's products out there that can spoof networks. 
whether if, if, if it's on wireless, there's products that can spoof wireless. I know because we make one of them. Yeah, and like, there's I'm also- looking around for my pineapple right now. Yeah. And like that little thing right there. Yeah, that. So there's also products out there that can spoof uh, the wire, wired network. So you can put a little thing called a LAN tap on a wired network and be able to exfiltrate any data that's passing through there. Or if they're using a VPN so that if the geolocation, the, the strict access is provided by an IP, IP, if they're just making sure that you have the same IP every single time, if the law enforcement agency is using a VPN, technically they could take this little box anywhere as long as they're using the same IP to reach out and use that web GUI. So either one, I feel like they're going to have some security implications if they're not being properly supervised and properly maintained and like updated by this company Grayshift. So I do and, worry a lot about that kind of stuff. And that, and, and that is the, the key here, right? The, the problem isn't necessarily the device itself. If, in some ways, what Grayshift is doing is better than what, like, what was the name of the, the one that was going around for a while? IP box or something? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which anybody could get a hold of. Grayshift uh, makes you authenticate as a law enforcement agency before they'll even let you on the website. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to limit this to law enforcement. Uh, that said, but you know, then what if a law enforcement agency decides to resell the box because they may need to make some quick money? Well, and, and so the other side of this is that's true of everything that law enforcement uses. You know, what if somebody right. gets a hold of the gun, uh, that the, the police have, what if somebody steals the gun from the police and, and sells it? So, I mean, law enforcement has all kinds of dangerous items and we have to make sure that they are properly supervised and used. Uh, I think what gets people a little more upset about this is we have long established practices for supervising and controlling weapons. Sometimes they get abused, but generally they get caught. We don't, we didn't even know that a lot of these police forces were using this. So how can we have proper public supervision that it's being handled well, if it's, if it's done undercover and people don't even know what's happening. Exactly. And that's a huge problem is that we don't, we don't have any specific regulations in place for these kind of secure data exfiltration devices currently. Like there should, there are some laws that say like, hey, you have to get a warrant to be able to crack into this certain thing for different cases, but there's nothing that says this device has to be this specific protocol or anything like that. Companies are advised but where are the, where's that regulation? And we're, we're currently not seeing that. So I do worry that this device might not have proper protocols in place, but of course I don't know, they might. Yeah, no, and, and, and I'm all for law enforcement being able to use these. I, this, is, this is the solution. You don't need back doors. You don't need to break all our encryption, go for this kind of stuff, be transparent, be public, and, and make sure that we have proper supervision so that it's only used in cases with a warrant and it's only used by proper personnel and it's properly safeguarded. And we don't know all of those things uh, about it right now. And I think that makes people nervous and rightly so. Well, especially <laughs> since, you know, I, you know, Apple and iOS is, you know, that the company likes to tout itself as, you know, we don't, you know, we're, we're not interested in, you know, people grabbing data and we, we you know, encryption is very important to us. Well, there are tools that obviously Apple, you know, can't lock down. So if you're trying to figure out what your next uh, operating system is based on this sort of thing, it's like kind of know that for the right amount of money, your phone will be broken open. Yeah. Right? And, and there's so much more to talk about here, including responsible disclosure. If they know of this vulnerability, shouldn't they be telling Apple about it? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the proper way to go about that and make sure that this kind of vulnerability isn't exploited by the bad guys? Uh, Shannon, I know you're going to be talking more about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing an episode of ThreatWire over on YouTube.com slash Hack5. So if you want to see like a whole spiel about it, definitely check that out. Thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and join the discussion in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. We get emails, Sarah. You're right, Tom, we do. In fact, we got one from Matt. Uh, this was a hot button topic of the week, the ban cash episode where we talked about the merits of banning cash versus not banning cash. Do we need it? 
and when. Matt says, one thing I think you guys are forgetting is the need for secret purchases. If you're buying a gift for a special someone and you don't want that activity recorded or shared to a bank account, cash in that sense is really ideal. Now, Matt, I don't think you're doing anything underhanded. I think you're probably just going to buy something for your special someone. Hmm. Uh, but yes, it's true that that uh, using cash is uh, less of a paper trail overall for purchases you don't want followed. Yeah, I a lot of people use the <laughs> gift argument. I feel like Sweden, which has like the majority of its populace cashless, has probably figured out a way to buy gifts without their special someone's discovery. Yeah, I don't think the Swedes just decided that like birthdays were no longer They're like being. no more gifts in Sweden. We've right. got a cashless society. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, being tracked is definitely a common and legitimate uh, concern about a cashless society. Uh, and that's where, you know, things like blockchain and stuff might be a future solution to that. But right now, um, you know, you, you're relying on the discretion of your bank. And and I actually responded to Matt about this, like, how do you think they do it in Sweden? And he said, I don't know, Swiss bank accounts, I guess. I don't <laughs> yeah. There's one one place that I go to every single summer and I always use cash. I never use my credit card at that place. And it's called DEF CON because it's full of hackers. Oh yeah. And I do not want to use cash at any of the vendors, even my own. Like I, I have so many people that prefer to use cash over credit card is what I, what I was saying. But like there's there's a lot of reasons why a cashless community or a cashless country would be very, very hard to implement. Uh, but I, I guess you would just have to to take those those problems into consideration and yeah. just deal with it. Swedish hackers, let us know what you do. You probably still just use cash because Sweden isn't yeah. actually cashless. <laughs> but. Uh, we also talked about uh, recycling batteries to recover metals, uh, not only metals like lithium, but also rare earth metals. And yesterday afternoon, probably it was out around the same time we were talking about it, a new story came out. Armando alerted us to it. He said, this article posted the same day you reported on the rare earth recycling efforts. Although still years away from serving as a resource for these metals, it appears as though there may be other options going forward. If the report is accurate, it would seem that some of these metals aren't so rare after all. A study published in Nature Scientific Reports describes a deposit of hundreds of years worth of rare earth oxides near Minamitorishima island in japan the report says the find contains the equivalent of 780 years worth of yttrium 620 years worth of europium 420 years of terbium and 730 years of dysprosium china currently dominates the supply of these metals uh, needed for electronic manufacturing but it looks like japan will be a major supplier of them if they can figure out how to recover these uh, in an efficient manner that doesn't mean the recycling efforts go away. They're still recovering lithium and other things. And 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 it's going to be good for Korea to have some of these rare earths not needing to be imported from Japan, same as it would not need to import them from China. All right, let's check in with Len Peralta and find out what he has been illustrating in our big news of the week illustration. Yeah, you know, I always feel like I come in late to the game on some of these times because if no, something, no. Happens, something happens early in the week, um, I, I, you know, you guys talk about it a lot, but I figure this it was a big story this week. Of course, I'm talking about uh, a Mark Zuckerberg uh, testifying in front of Congress for a total of I think, ten hours. <laughs> in a hours booster seat, no less. In a booster seat, and that's what this uh, shows. It's a little bit of low hanging fruit. I tried to come up with something that was I had not seen, but so many of the memesters were beat me to it. Um, but this, you know, one of the things about Mark Zuckerberg, whether you like him or not, you have to admit a little bit he is kind of robotic, kind of alien a little bit. And uh, this is maybe what was happening was that the aliens who are controlling Mark Zuckerberg are realizing that their observation tool is no longer fooling the humans. <laughs> so uh, so I that's something this. we may have been witnessing this week. Uh, and so what may happen to Zuck, he may uh, get on his... Right, uh, yeah. The humans are becoming self-aware. <laughs> they they're very, very scary. I mean, it's, it's a us. possibility. Yeah, they're, we're, 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 we're on to them now. Len, um, yes, I'll have my team get back to you on that. <laughs> exactly. He is actually saying, Senator, this is a complex issue that deserves more than a one-word answer. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Good old Zuck. Well, go check out Robot Zuck uh, and his alien manipulators <laughs> at lenperaltastore.com. You got it. It's good stuff, man. Yeah, please do. It's amazing. Please do. 
And, and by I the way, like you guys, that you're illustrating the big news of the week. I think that's I'm cool. Trying to, yes. And by the yeah, way, you yeah, guys, thank you so much for uh, uh, for keeping me busy. All your DTNS folks. If just remember, you can hire me to do stuff too if you don't want to buy the print. So there you go. Go hire Len. Uh, thank you, Len. As always, you are a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, thank you. Shannon so Morris, thank you to you as well. You mentioned uh, some upcoming stuff on Threatwire. Where can people keep up with everything that you do online? Yes, I totally did. Well, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at snubs, S-N-U-B-S. Uh, but the big place is Threatwire. Currently, I'm campaigning to get more patrons over on our own Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Threatwire. But I recently talked about the crazy stuff happening in DC, how they uh, purportedly believe that they found Stingray devices, which are those little IMSI catchers. But next week, I am definitely going to be talking about good old robot Zuck, <laughs> as well as all the crazy stuff happening today with Gray Key. So I'm really looking forward to next week's episode. All right, let's finish out uh, with a patron email. Ryan said, I just pledged on Patreon at the co-executive producer level. I wanted to take a second and share my story and gratitude with you. DTNS hit my radar after Tech Stuff gave multiple shout outs. I've been hooked ever since. I moved outside of the Twin Cities of Minnesota a few years ago, which resulted in an 80 plus mile commute each day. DTNS gets me through my morning commute. Every morning, I hear the call to action to support the show. Spreading the DTNS gospel has been easy. I live for tech, and I share relevant knowledge from the show with coworkers and friends. I have been promising myself that if my situation changed, I would support the show financially, and I finally did. I started a technology consulting business on a part-time basis a few months ago. After my first paying customer covered my startup costs, I now have some extra funds that I set aside for my Patreon pledge. Finally, being able to give some value back feels very rewarding. Thank you for sharing incredible daily content. You enrich my mind and morning 4.30 a.m. drive time dtns has helped motivate me to step out and pursue my passion and for that i am grateful bracing for a spring blizzard in minnesota ryan marshall thank you ryan i can't oh, think we of are a... grateful to you ryan yeah thank i can't you, think ryan. of a better explanation uh of 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 what it means to be a patron and we're super super thankful for ryan and everybody else at patreon.com slash dtns if you want to give us feedback like Ryan did or really anything of your choice, we're listening. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday. Join us live if you can, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back on Monday with Lamar Wilson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> ah, it was a good show. Yay! Great Yay! Show. Yay! Super Great fun. Show. Shannon, yeah, good you're just the best. For the, yeah, I know. She really is. What? Just like, you're just the best at explaining, um, you know, certain things. Just you have a good way of explaining things. Thank you. Thank you so much. That yeah. means a lot to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, lots of people are smart, but not everybody can explain things well. I think I found um, my calling when I started doing my hack tips. Uh -huh. <laughs> I discovered that, well, somebody came up to me and they were like, my teacher showed your show in my class hmm. and we were doing our whole, uh, a whole series of videos uh, that we were showing in, in in our classroom and i was just like really and he was like yeah and i'm taking college and i was like oh my god this is crazy so that's awesome. that's great that's i love great. breaking down technical stuff it's so i fun. always get uh nervous when people tell me they showed something i did in their class because i'm like oh great <laughs> what mistakes did i make crap <laughs> don't do what this guy did <laughs> i mean let me fact check myself I for you intentionally uh <laughs> Led astray because I said the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of wrong things, uh, titles. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a segue. I didn't say they would be. It's not a segue sense, if you just yeah. say speaking of, insert whatever I just said. Oh, there we go. It's a segue. Okay. Uh, right. Showbot.chatrealm.net. What about showbot.chatrealm.net? Titles? Yeah. Uh, all the. Right, isn't that uh, show titles? So. Um, Yes. Oop. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to voting. give me the title. What's the oh, title? Uh, there's a there's like ten titles, but I like iPhones unlocked in 15 minutes or less, or your <laughs> description is free. That's so long. 
Like half I of like, it's gonna fall off I the I unlock. I unlock. Mm. You're gonna like the way you look. <laughs> You're I gonna guarantee. like the way you unlock. <laughs> iPhone I security guarantee. is a gray area. How's that? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good it's one. Spell gray with an E, not an A. Who does? Uh, gray box or gray lock, I mean? Uh, a lot of people spell gray with an E. That's the English. Gray key. Well, that's kind of how Tom, you know, spells realize with an S. It's uh, okay. I see yeah. what you're doing. Fine. I just read too much Jane Austen growing up. I mean, you're not wrong. It's not incorrect. <laughs> I'm wrong for the country I'm in, but. Well, but like, but it's also not illegal. Like, you can spell it that way if you want. <laughs> no one's <laughs> yeah. going to arrest it'll you. Just, it'll cause people to be like, oh, are you from, where are you from? Greenville, Illinois. Oh. I, I remember one time I said ZDNet in a meeting and Molly Wood just was not having it. She came down on me. So I was, I was like, just no. like, you just, you just can't. She just went, no, no, you don't know. You don't do that. I, I mean, but again, like, so. I wouldn't, but I would know what you meant. And I'd just be like, oh, Tom. You would just roll your eyes at me. Like it's still else. not wrong. It's not. It's uh, what what um, it's ge inappropriate. In Geo grammar terms. appropriation. Yeah, I don't know. I made that up. This was like two thousand five. That's so I've, I've learned a lot since then. Tom was feisty back then. <laughs> Roger remembers. <laughs> Tom's learned a lot about it. You know? He had a long ponytail, and that you mm. didn't know me when I had the ponytail. No, I just you remember saw when your hair was long. Your hair was long back then. No, was it? Yeah, it was down to your, like, almost, like, touching your shoulders. Wow. wow. Really? That was, like, when you first started. I mean. Your hair was long. I, it was bad. Well, was I mean, ragged. I'm not going to put a judgment call on that. Oh, I will. <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't like, you know. Yeah. It was longer than it is now. But I, yeah. I had, like, uh, you know, down, down on my back ponytail long hair back mm, mm. when i was in college so did i i looked really bad yeah man it was the 90s that's the way my, we wore i it had a then. i had a rat tail that went to the middle did you of have a back. trench coat to I go did. with it i did because <laughs> yeah, i also had round linen specs <laughs> oh the rat tail and the, the rat tail kid. yeah plus and i like had in bangs in the school photos you'd like kind of bring it to the front so everyone <laughs> yes. was like look what i've been doing for three years I used, to put, used to put it in my yeah i used to have really long bangs that went over one side of my face oh wow well, we got to see some of these photos then oh uh i don't know if they exist there is one photo on my facebook of kind of near that time where i did have a rat tail I kind of cut have. it and i had all the flare on my jean jacket <laughs> so there you go <laughs> You there was a, the the rat tail thing was like it would you know boys my age had it but it was younger and then the cool thing would be to like if you were a brunette you would just bleach your bangs yeah right um, you know? so, so it was like the... just the bang bleach and then you'd kind of you know constantly sort of you know toss your bangs to the side so that was like your... Sarah are you an eighties child uh what do you think I think you are yeah yeah I am. Um, <laughs> Yes, I would. I would consider myself an '80s child. So I was you're born like a, in you're... the '70s. Okay, that's but fine. I I don't remember really anything until the I 80s, was born so. in the '70s, and I remember um, corduroy bell bottoms. Yeah, and I remember a lot of people just kind of hanging out on H Street and a lot of Volkswagens. <laughs> <laughs> a lot I, of Volkswagens. I remember, yeah, because so you know, for a while, I don't know about. I don't know if this was like a countrywide thing, but you know, you pegged your pants. Oh, I did that know, in the nineties. Certain Peg, ages. Your, late 80s. This was this was the eighties for me. Yeah, you peg your pants. Like anything that was straight leg or wider was oh, just yeah. like super embarrassing. Parents. Back. I did it. I did it my entire freshman year. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like and you peg them. That. You peg them real tight. You know, and it kind of hurts at the end of the day. So, my parents were kind of, you know, they had Birkenstocks and it was very embarrassing, and they wouldn't peg their pants and awful. And then, of course, it all came back around where I was like, Mom, can I borrow your Birkenstocks? Because they're like, <laughs> really cool now. And your mom's pegging her pants. <laughs> My mom didn't peg her like, pants, Mom, but, you know. People don't do that anymore. Stop it. Yeah. It was now yeah, like all of the, like, clogs and weird things that, like, were, like, extremely embarrassing became very cool and retro. The Peter Fonda attire. I was a weird was kid. Like, yeah. I was also an 80s kid, so... 
I feel very I mean, I, young. We were, and we were probably all weird kids. Yes, like wrong. Walter Birkenstock was, was probably an easy weird. blanket <laughs> statement to make. <laughs> oh, I didn't care about fashion. Like I was, I was hanging out with the um, the skaters. So huh, yeah. if something oh, was skaters cool, care about fashion, but there's a mm-hmm. particular. Well, if something was cool, we were just like, no, we're not going to wear that. <laughs> right? I yeah. I like what is anti-establishment what, cool thing? I don't even know what pegging pants is. So pegging pants. I don't either. Is you I don't take either. Your, take you your don't? pants. Don't. Right? Oh no, my no. god! You guys didn't peg pants. I, so no. you take your pants and you pull. You pull at the. You pull at the bottom. So okay. this is your. This is like your leg, and this is the material. You tighten it, and you take the extra material. And, and you roll it, it up twice. Oh, I that's peg. I used to do that. Yeah, okay, oh, I used to do that. that's what that, I mean. That's what we called it. It was probably called yeah. something else. That's right. That's yeah, the, the idea school. was to, to I never did that yourself ankle jeans mm-hmm. before there were ankle jeans. <laughs> Buy them to be like slightly too long, and then peg them so they're real tight at the bottom and roll them up twice. Yeah, I I had to that's do that so only funny. because I was very short. Still, I'm very short, so yeah, I had to roll yeah. up my pants. I, I did that because I was playing Tom Sawyer in the school play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's adorable. Right there. So that's what it looks like, kind of. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I used to. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I never did that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a bad peg. Yeah, it's a bad peg. Well, Uh, like me and my friends were wearing like Jinkos and wide flare type jeans. Yeah. When the 70s were really big in the 90s, that's what we were wearing. They would sell pre pegged pants, too. I had a pair of Ocean Pacific (laughs) jeans that were like just already like sewn (laughs) at the bottom. Did you have a Benetton top, too? Like I never sweater. had a Benetton top. I was not Benetton a rich sweater. man. Yeah. Was it? I, well, I wasn't a rich kid either, but I, you know. Parents we called it, we call it Benetton. Benetton. No. You're, you're <laughs> shopping at J.C. Cool. Penny Merritt. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's oh, interesting. That's so funny. Pant pegging. Oh, I got a lot of these. <laughs> my mom just sent me some photos. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said, did she also say, "Tell Merritt I never pegged my pants"? So this is the, these oh. are the steps. You take the, yes. you take oh, the yes, pants. Yes, right. This is right. Exactly right. Pull it. You get the extra fold. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay, I did do that. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I did do that. I did that. Yeah. That looks so bad. Yes, it looks so this. stupid. That. Like that's like didn't that's like, like pants, total like, that's like, like intentional like high water. Cutting off circulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is that you actually get pants that are longer than you need in order to do Right, it. yeah. Okay. It's not to make them capri length. No. You want them to be full length, but you also want to peg them. So basically what you do is you get an inseam size that's maybe two inches longer than what you need, and then mm-hmm. you, you do the pegging. I always had an inseam size that was too short because my parents were waiting to replace my pants. <laughs> and then you just called them shorts. Oh. And I had the J.C. Penny collared shirts with the fox instead oh, of the, yeah. the eyes. Oh yes, ones. I remember the, cost. the off the off brand. The right? off brand, yeah. I was the youngest of the cousins on one on my mom's side, and my older girl cousin was, you know, cool fashion. So I mean, pretty much everything I wore was a hand me down, but it was like cool stuff. Uh huh. And I never told anybody, you know, like right. I'm not telling somebody my cousin wore this two years ago. You know, it was like guest no, jeans. Yeah. That's right. I'm rich. <laughs> no, I was free. I remember, all my, all my I remember. high school clothing choices were determined by John Hughes movies. Mm. So like, my, you know, anything I that re- Ferris Bueller wore, mm-hmm. I was probably wearing. Mm. Did you have a members only jacket? I had one. No, no, I didn't. I did have a beret, though. I didn't like hats right. until after high school. I that well, was a cool you don't seem to like wearing hats now. Okay, so it's a it's a tr- it's, <laughs> it's a, it's still an after high comes school. Waves. <laughs> still coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Still coming. <laughs> Technically, we're still in the era. Um, I don't. Uh, Ferris Bueller was that. I mean, as wonderful as a movie that was, they were too preppy for me. They were like oh, Chicago okay. kids. Like I don't know what. Yeah, I didn't know anything about those kids. Yeah, that was sort of like my sophomore, junior year. As soon as I went into the like my junior, senior year, I was really getting into like hardcore punk mm. and that kind of movement. No. So, yeah, that skinny was... puppy. Not yet. No, skinny, skinny puppy, puppy for was me skinny was puppy around college for me. No, I guess you're right. It was like freshman year because we're about yeah. the same age. Yeah, that was my that was college. That was, it was college, college radio station, man. I was yeah, playing yeah. 
Skinny puppy and knits her ab. Knights are ab. Knights are ab. Yes. Who's Cardew? Who's Husker do? And then I became, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bob Mould. And he dropped the other two. It's Bob Mould? No. Mould? Mould? <laughs> yeah, but I it, saw, it, I saw he Husker like do and Chai Lai. He mellowed Seal out light. because he came <laughs> it was, out. It was a great song. Which one? See a little light? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you remember Bob Mould's side project called Sugar? Oh, my gosh. I'd forgotten all about that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, awesome music. That was around the same time as uh, Hindu Love Gods, which Hindu was Love everyone Gods. from REM except for Michael Stipe and Warren Zevon singing leads. Wow, wow. Which is like everyone in REM except for Michael Stipe is who? Yeah. All the guys in REM that right. don't sing. The other two. The other two. I don't, I don't remember anymore. I used to. Um, I used have to you ever seen too. Michael Stipe with hair where it was like super long? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was, it's jarring. Yeah, I remember it just like after they got super vague that he cut it and it progressively just disappeared from his head. <laughs> well, he was going bald. Well, he wouldn't, he the wouldn't be the only that? one. Man, it's a thing. Actually, if you watch a stand. Peter Buck. Peter Buck, yes. That's Mike the Mills. only Mike one Mills. that at one time I probably would have known from our And Mike year. Mills, right? Mike Mills, yeah. Yes. I, was I used to do the REM marathon at our uh, college radio station. Eighteen hours of REM. We see. This is the thing. When I went to when I started college, there were no good. We didn't. There was no college. My mom radio just station. sent me a picture of my pants pig. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make do with 120 minutes on MTV. Oh yeah. No, when I worked at the radio station in college, man, it was like I would go into the production studio and then I would I would record all the albums so I could listen to them on my tape deck. In my '85 Nova, actually, we had. I could act, even in Modesto. I could get um, 105 from San Francisco Live 105, and uh, Steve Masters, one of the DJs there, uh, made a concerted effort to bring over a lot of British, uh, as well as like underground alternative bands uh, on air. And he like made he he like did this whole thing every week, um, and it was great because that's where a lot of a lot of uh, bands that people previously would have not had as had as much airplay uh got it great great mike just posted a picture of me with my sort of mullet let me see in the Uh, chat i just i put my pink pants photo in our daily slack (gasps) they're they're not that bad but i mean it was you you look like you look like the standard asian guy from like an action movie in the 80s (laughs) That's what I was going for. <gasps> oh my God, Sarah! <laughs> Wait, Pant pegger, white pants, no less. You look so cool. Yeah, <laughs> real cool, real cool. With your so cool pants. Do you know what year this is from? That's awesome. I do. This was <laughs> nineteen ninety. Wow! Look how, look how that's look like nine hundred two one zero territory. Look yeah. how fresh faced you are. You're so. You, you look, look like, like wait, someone what? from hold, a. Hold on. No, wait. No, you look. <laughs> you look like. No, no. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way. You look like someone from <laughs> ABC Friday Night, like a show, like ABC Friday Night. Well, somebody should have put me on 90210. I would have Do you want me to share this with everyone or no? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. This is not a secret photo. Uh, it's just, uh, just in case. If you Sarah, to... you look like the girl that I probably would have had a crush on if I watched ABC Friday Nights growing up. Like, oh, nice. it's Sarah Lane. Ooh, well, yeah. Oh, this is, this is when we would still, you know, you'd curl your bangs <laughs> and then do a little something, something up top to give, you know, the whole thing some height. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, I haven't seen that in a while. Thank you, Mom. That's great. <laughs> Pegged pants. Let's see if I can find that picture of me with from 1988, circa 1988. Man, it's a real fat face. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you know, you know how how a lot of us were in the past. Just kept a lot of fat in our cheeks. No, for guys like me, the fat gets added <laughs> on as I get old. I was actually oh, scrawnier wow. as a kid. Yeah. That's really? Cool. Oh yeah. So I was. I was. It was. I suffered from fat face in a real big way. I was skinnier as a kid. Really? (laughs) Yeah, I gained weight. Unfortunately. What did you do? Did you step on a scale? Oh, did you just step on a scale, or you just? Me? I started drinking frappuccinos, and then yes, I stepped on a scale. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then you were like, huh, those numbers are different. <laughs> I, was I, was broke. I was like my pants don't fit anymore. Yeah. Before I shot off the stream, I, I was gonna say that um, I was happy that I could keep my high school weight all the way up until 2013, 2012. Wow. And then after I got married, I got fat. <laughs> Roger, you're not fat. You're really not. You're not the least bit fat. None of no none of us are. What it, what is that? Is that a flyer, Tom? This is. The flyer for Cable Rock 101, WDBS, Whoa. the dorm mm. broadcasting system at the University of Illinois. Oh, Was that your gosh. show? Uh, I, I did a show on there, yeah. Oh, man. That's I so love cool. that. That's, that's so, so cool. cool. Uh, that's, like, that's like a cool poster. You should frame it. Step one, hook the FM cable to the back of your stereo receiver. <laughs> step two, connect the cable to your cable box. Wow. Step three, so turn on your it. stereo and tune it to WDBS Cable FM 101. The internet has so made good. that unnecessary. Uh, you play Bruce Coburn, <laughs> If a Tree Falls, R.E.M., South it, Central yeah, Rain. Which, is, which, which saved a lot of people. Um, awesome. So we'll see everyone Monday with Lamar Wilson. Any last words from our from Shannon? Keep rocking. At least I Keep. got chicken. <laughs> Wait, We're what? nobody's fool from Cinderella. Uh, rat round and when round. When all else fails. Remember your roots, everybody. <laughs> All right. Till next week. Bye. <laughs>